Marussia is eagerly anticipating her wedding, which is set to take place in just two months. Amidst the whirlwind of preparations, she finds herself deeply engrossed in discussions with her friends about how to celebrate her bachelorette party. Having spent the past two years living in a quaint, cozy house in the village that she inherited from her grandmother, Marussia has grown accustomed to the serene beauty of her surroundings. Despite the lengthy three-hour commute to and from work, the enchanting scents of lilacs, ripe raspberries, and apples, along with the soothing sounds of nature, have infused her life with a sense of peace and tranquility that starkly contrasts with the hustle and bustle of city life. While her friends are keen on throwing a bachelorette party in a nightclub or bar, Marussia insists on hosting the celebration in her cherished village home. This event not only marks the end of her single life, but also symbolizes her farewell to the tranquil village life she has come to love. In this village, where both she and her friends are employed, Marussia met her future husband, further intertwining her life with this peaceful haven. Amidst these personal milestones, Marussia faces an unexpected challenge when she visits her friend Paulina at the car depot. Paulina shares the distressing news that the depot is closing down due to the land being sold for construction, leaving them with only a month to vacate. As they grapple with this sudden change, Paulina reveals another concern, a female Labrador, affectionately named Iskra, who recently gave birth to three puppies, is now at risk of being homeless. The dog and her puppies, who had found refuge and care at the depot, now face an uncertain future. Moved by the plight of Iskra and her puppies, Marussia offers to take them in, despite the imminent changes in her own life. Her decision to provide temporary foster care for the dog family reflects her compassionate nature and her willingness to help those in need. As she navigates the challenges of preparing for her wedding and moving to the city with her future husband, Boris, Marussia remains committed to finding a permanent home for Iskra and her puppies. Marussia's relationship with Boris is marked by their differing views on rural versus city living, which occasionally leads to disagreements. Boris is firmly against the idea of living in the village, preferring the conveniences of city life, despite their quarrels, their love and mutual respect for each other enable them to reconcile and move forward. As Marussia contemplates her feelings for Boris, she recognizes the stability and security he offers, even if her emotions don't align with the passionate love often depicted in romantic tales. As the wedding approaches and Marussia prepares to embark on this new chapter of her life, she remains hopeful that everything will fall into place. Both for her and for Iskra and her puppies, her story is a testament to the strength of the human spirit, the power of compassion, and the enduring bonds of friendship and love that sustain us through life's transitions. You will find yourself feeling envious of your friend. This sentiment may stem from observing their achievements, possessions, or even their overall lifestyle, which might appear more appealing or successful when compared to your own. It's a natural emotion that can emerge from comparing aspects of your life with theirs, leading to a longing for what they have that you might perceive. As lacking in your own life, this envy, while common, can serve as a reflection of your desires and aspirations, potentially motivating personal growth and self-improvement. Marussia nodded again in silent agreement, her heart heavy with the memory of her grandmother's passing. The day had finally arrived, marked by the appointment set a year prior, when her grandmother, in her final days, had called Marussia to her bedside. Despite her weakened state, she had insisted on passing down a family heirloom to her beloved granddaughter. Now, as Marussia stood before the closet door, she couldn't help but feel a mix of emotions swirling within her. There, hanging neatly on the door, was the mesmerizing white dress her grandmother had given her before her passing. It was a symbol of love and tradition, a cherished memento of a bygone era. With a heavy heart, Marussia recalled the moment when her grandmother had summoned her. Unable to leave her bed, through labored breaths, she had guided. Marussia to a small cache hidden within the house, where a box containing earrings of remarkable beauty lay waiting. Someday, you will wear these for your wedding, her grandmother had whispered, bestowing upon her the precious heirloom. Now they are yours, 
her grandmother had said, kissing Marussia on the forehead and blessing her with the significance of the family heirloom, these are the earrings of my great-grandmother, they are your devoted diamonds, priceless not only for their craftsmanship, but for the legacy they carry, as Marussia recalled the moment, she couldn't help but feel a sense of solemnity and reverence for the cherished heirlooms, they were a tangible connection to her family's past, a reminder of the generations that had come before her, the day of the wedding dress's arrival was a whirlwind of emotions for Marussia, as she twirled in front of the mirror, admiring the gown's beauty, she couldn't shake the feeling of anticipation building within her, Boris, her fiancé, watched her with military precision, his gaze unwavering as he took in her radiance, despite the superstition that the groom should not see the bride in her full glory before the wedding day, Marussia couldn't resist sharing the significance of the earrings with Boris, she recounted the story of her grandmother's gift and the legacy they carried, feeling a sense of pride in preserving her family's traditions, meanwhile, Iskra, the dog rescued by Marussia, had been living with her new owner for a month, the enclosure built for her provided a safe haven, allowing her to gradually regain trust in humans, Marussia had taken a special vacation to be with Iskra, determined to restore her faith in humanity after the cruelty she had endured, but as the weekend approached, Marussia found herself facing a dilemma, Boris, her fiancé, had decided to stay overnight at her village house for the first time, it was the perfect opportunity to discuss Iskra's future, but Boris fell asleep before she could broach the subject, as Marussia lay awake, contemplating their conversation, she was jolted from her thoughts by a rustling noise, to her horror, she discovered Boris dressed and holding a box of diamond jewelry, stolen from her family's cash, shocked and betrayed, Marussia realized the true nature of her fiancé's intentions, in a moment of desperation, Boris lunged at Marussia with a knife, his actions driven by a madness she couldn't comprehend, but before he could harm her, Iskra, the faithful dog, leaped through the window, her protective instincts kicking into overdrive with a swift and decisive move, Iskra incapacitated Boris, saving Marussia from imminent danger, the chaos that ensued brought the village to its knees, but amidst the turmoil, Marussia found solace in the loyalty of her canine companion in the aftermath of the ordeal, Marussia found love and companionship in one of the men from her friend's car depot. Together, they built a life filled with love, laughter, and the joy of a growing family. And as they awaited the arrival of their first child, Marussia couldn't help but reflect on the twists and turns that had led her to this moment of happiness. As the story came to a close, Marussia couldn't help but smile grateful for the unexpected turns that had led her to true love and fulfillment after watching this story what do you think of then there's an another story about wolf let's expect what will happen in the dense woods of the wisconsin countryside alone wolf prowled driven by persistent hunger its golden eyes scanned the wilderness seeking its next meal with ruthless determination as luck would have it a plump squirrel soon caught its keen eye and the wolf wasted no time in stalking its unsuspecting prey. With calculated grace, the wolf crept closer, its anticipation growing with each silent step. The squirrel, busy collecting nuts for the impending winter, remained oblivious to the imminent danger lurking behind the veil of foliage. But just as the wolf prepared to strike, the squirrel sensed the subtle shift in the air and froze in place, ears twitching with apprehension, seizing the opportunity, the wolf froze as well, blending seamlessly with the shadows. Then, with a sudden burst of energy, it lunged forward, fueled by fear and hunger. The chase was on, with the squirrel darting through the underbrush and the relentless predator in hot pursuit. Deeper into the heart of the forest they raced, unaware of the treacherous terrain that lay ahead, forgotten traps, hidden beneath fallen leaves, lay in wait, ready to ensnare unsuspecting victims. Blinded by the thrill of the pursuit, the wolf paid little heed to its surroundings until it was too late. With one misstep, the wolf's leg was ensnared in a man-made trap, clamping down with a vice-like grip. In an ironic twist of fate, the cunning predator became the hunted, trapped by the very devices it had once evaded with ease. Realizing its predicament, the wolf reluctantly released its captive prey, now focused 
solely on freeing itself from the unforgiving jaws of the trap, but try as it might, the metal jaws held tight, and panic surged through the wolf as it struggled in vain against its captivity, as time passed and exhaustion set in, the wolf knew it needed help, trapped by expert hunters, there was no escape without assistance, desperation consumed the once proud predator as it awaited a miracle, hoping against hope that salvation would come before the hunters found it, the weakened and fatigued. Wolf lay ensnared, its once formidable presence diminished after enduring an agonizing wait, the peaceful quiet of the forest was abruptly broken by the sound of distant activity, startling the wolf, it tuned into the soft rustling and the muted symphony of footsteps and whispers drawing closer, what was once a sanctuary now seemed to harbor an invisible menace, as the noises approached, the wolf became vigilant, its attention then shattered by the sound of a gunshot that thundered through the forest, this sound, a harbinger of fear, marked the arrival of hunters, transforming the tranquil haven into a dangerous battlefield, with its heart racing, the wolf's instincts urged it to flee, yet the merciless trap held it fast, the gunshot was a harrowing reminder of the looming peril, panic gripped the wolf as it recognized the hunters were on the move, their lethal intentions unmistakable, despite its efforts to gauge the direction of the impending threat, the hunters advanced with deliberate stealth, their calculated movements designed to disorient their prey. Amidst this high-stress scenario, the wolf's acute hearing picked up on their whisper communications, adding a layer of ominous anticipation to its predicament. As the hunters converged, the wolf's attempts to escape became increasingly frantic, a race against time. The enveloping forest and the quickening of its breaths underscored the wolf's desperation. However, a moment of resignation followed, the wolf lay down, prepared to face its fate as the hunters neared, the atmosphere was charged with tension as the hunters, led by a younger member with a gleam of malice in his eyes, surrounded their quarry, yet, their resolve wavered under the gaze of their leader, who after a moment of contemplation, locked eyes with the wolf, in that silent communication, he made an unexpected decision that would alter the course of the encounter, contrary to what anyone expected, he commanded his group to spare the wolf and set it free, this directive caused a moment of hesitation, as the hunters grappled with their respect for their leader's authority and their own primal instincts among the hunters, it was the most daring who raised their voice in objection, however, the resolve of their leader was unshakable, his decision final, as he remained steadfast, a tangible air of resolve enveloped the group, signifying their unity and readiness to follow through with the plan, this moment underscored not just the leader's authority but also the group's willingness to embrace the path he had chosen, despite the initial resistance, their collective determination hinted at the depth of their trust and the strength of their bond, ready to face whatever lay ahead together, recognizing the steadfast resolve of their leader to not falter, the group began to meticulously plan their unanticipated rescue operation, initially, their expedition into the dense forest wasn't aimed at capturing predators such as wolves, or bears, their primary goal was to hunt for wild boars, deer, and other game whose meat could fetch a good price at the local marketplace, encountering a wolf wasn't part of their plan, nor was it a creature from which they could profit, moreover, they had no interest in hunting it merely for the thrill, their meeting was purely accidental, and they were determined to make amends, however, they quickly realized that they were ill-equipped for this task, anticipating an ordinary hunt, they had not brought along any tools that could assist in releasing the wolf from its trap thus, they decided to return to their vehicles to search for suitable equipment, in the meantime, one compassionate hunter chose to stay behind, ensuring the safety of both himself and the ensnared wolf, armed and vigilant, he stationed himself close to the animal, which regarded the human with a blend of caution and intrigue, the hunter, too, remained alert, fully aware that the forest was replete with hidden, dangers and unexpected surprises, the rest of the hunting party ventured deeper into the forest, their movements harmonizing with the natural sounds around them, it wasn't long before they stumbled upon a piece of plywood hidden amongst the undergrowth, after assessing its durability and potential usefulness, they decided it could serve as a protective barrier during the wolf's release, with the plywood secured, 
They made their way back to the side of the trapped wolf, approaching the wolf with the plywood. The hunter moved with deliberate caution, sensing the animal's apprehension. The wolf's anxiety heightened when another hunter arrived, this time wielding a small wrench. Despite the peaceful intentions now evident in their actions, the wolf couldn't suppress a fearful whimper, convinced its end was imminent. Yet, the hunter's demeanor had shifted significantly, even the youngest among them, who had initially regarded the wolf with a boyish curiosity, now approached with a sense of calm and responsibility, ready to partake in the rescue with one hand holding the plywood and the other prepared to assist, the first man cautiously approached the wolf, each step measured and deliberate, as if navigating a minefield, as the distance between them shrank, the wolf's survival instincts surged to the forefront, its ears pressed flat against its skull, and it bared its teeth, a physical manifestation of its readiness to defend itself after years of fending for survival in the wilderness, the air between them crackled with an electric tension, yet the man paused, an unspoken acknowledgement of respect for the wolf's hard-earned freedom, the piece of plywood he held, a makeshift barrier, symbolized more than just a physical divide, it was a testament to the man's intention not to harm, undaunted by the wolf's display of mistrust and aggression, the hunter began to speak in low, soothing tones, his words, though barely audible, seemed to weave through the trees, carrying with them an intention of peace and understanding. Initially skeptical, the wolf's demeanor gradually shifted, it was as if the hunter's genuine empathy and the subtle, non-threatening gestures he made were slowly chipping away at the wall of distrust the wolf had built around itself, a flicker of curiosity began to replace the outright hostility in the wolf's eyes, with each tentative step, the man closed the distance between them the plywood acting as a symbolic bridge as well as a literal shield, the wolf, now leaning more towards curiosity. Then confrontation, allowed this advance, its aggressive posture softening, sensing this pivotal shift, the hunter carefully extended the plywood further, reinforcing the barrier while simultaneously offering it as an olive branch, then, it was time to address the cause of their meeting, the man's companion handed him a wrench, and together they turned their attention to the cruel trap that had ensnared the wolf's hind leg. Despite the wolf's instinctual weariness, it remained surprisingly composed, watching intently as the man skillfully navigated the intricacies of the trap. The surrounding woods seemed to stand still, as if nature itself was holding its breath in anticipation. With a steady hand and a focused gaze, the hunter maneuvered the wrench between the jagged teeth of the trap, his other hand firmly holding the plywood in place, his companions watched closely, ready with advice, their collective experience pulled in silent support, after what felt like an eternity. Their persistence paid off, the trap relented, its grip loosening with a creak that sounded like a sigh of relief, it was a moment of triumph, not just for the man and his companions, but for the wolf and perhaps even the forest itself, which seemed to breathe easier at the release, the wolf, now free, paused, its body tensed as it deliberated its next move, its instincts screamed warnings of potential deception, yet the actions of the humans suggested otherwise, as the hunters began to retreat. Slowly, giving the wolf space and time to adjust to its newfound freedom, it was evident that their intentions were genuine, this encounter, rather than ending in violence or further captivity, concluded with an unspoken understanding and respect between man and beast, the wolf, once ensnared and helpless, now stood as a testament to compassion and the possibility of coexistence, a beacon of hope in the silent woods, the wolf seized its opportunity to escape the clearing, its survival instincts. In full force, with a surge of energy, it leapt up and sprinted into the embrace of the nearby woods, disappearing from sight, the plywood, now etched with the evidence of the wolf's fight for freedom and victory, lay abandoned on the forest floor, having served its purpose in this remarkable tale of liberation, the hunters, their faces lit up with joy and a sense of accomplishment, shared smiles of camaraderie, the elder, the seasoned leader of the group who had orchestrated this unlikely alliance, nodded in silent approval, the men then resumed their task, resetting the trap with the hope of capturing something they could trade or sell. 
despite their efforts, it seemed they would return home empty-handed that day. However, the elder had a different perspective. While they hadn't secured a tangible prize, they had achieved something much more meaningful, repaying a long-standing debt of gratitude. He gathered the group to share the backstory of his deep-seated need to free the wolf. During a harsh winter, the elder found himself hopelessly lost in the dense woods, with the paths concealed under a blanket of snow, the forest transformed into a labyrinth, challenging even his extensive knowledge of the wilderness. Just when his situation seemed dire, a wolf appeared, unknowingly offering assistance. By following the tracks left by the wolf, the elder eventually found his way back to civilization. This experience left him with a profound sense of indebtedness to the creature that had unwittingly saved his life, even though he couldn't be certain if the wolf they had just freed was the same one from his past, the elder felt compelled to act, by aiding this wolf, he believed he was honoring the memory of the one that had helped him, thereby repaying his debt, as the hunters listened to this tale, they gained insight into the elder's actions and the deeper connection he felt to the wolf, this experience reshaped their understanding of life, the debts we owe to one another, and the mysterious bonds formed in the wild, this story serves as a poignant reminder of the unexpected ways in which lives can intersect, often leading to profound acts of kindness and gratitude. What are your thoughts on this unusual tale of hunters coming to the aid of a wolf? Share your reactions and comments below, and stay tuned for more captivating stories that explore the intricate web of relationships in the natural world. After watching this story, what do you think of? Then there is another story about a wolf falls into a trap, let's expect what will happen when a wolf falls into a trap set by hunters deep within the heart of the Wisconsin countryside, desperation and panic grip its primal instincts, as humans draw near, the wolf's frantic struggle intensifies, each passing moment bringing it closer to what seems like its demise, yet, just as the predator resigns itself to its fate, an unexpected savior emerges from the shadows, this lone wolf, a majestic creature prowling the wilderness with a persistent hunger, zeroes in on its next potential meal, a plump squirrel busily gathering nuts for the impending winter, with calculated precision, the wolf stalks its unsuspecting prey, the thrill of the impending hunt quickening its heartbeat as the wolf pounces, the squirrel's acute senses detect the looming danger, a frantic chase ensues through the dense underbrush, the wolf's relentless pursuit matched only by the squirrel's remarkable agility. Unbeknownst to them, they venture deeper into the forest, where remnants of human activity lay concealed beneath the fallen leaves. Blinded by the pursuit, the wolf falls victim to a long-forgotten trap, its leg ensnared in the hunter's snare. In a cruel twist of fate, the cunning predator becomes the helpless prey, with dawning realization. The wolf understands the need to release its captive meal in order to confront its own entrapment. Reluctantly, the wolf frees the squirrel, watching as it scampers away to safety, left alone to face the harsh reality of its predicament. The once proud predator now must reckon with the unforeseen consequences of its pursuit. As the hours passed, the situation grew more dire, the wolf's strength began to wane and its attempts to free itself became weaker, the harsh reality that it might not escape this trap alive started to sink in, the forest, once a realm of freedom and the hunt, had become a prison, the wolf's thoughts were interrupted by the sound of approaching footsteps, humans were coming, fear surged through the wolf's veins, in its mind, humans were synonymous with danger and death, it braced itself for what it believed to be its inevitable end, However, the universe had a twist in store, the figure that emerged from the trees was not a hunter intent on claiming a trophy, but a wildlife conservationist who had been monitoring animal activity in the area. This person, equipped with knowledge and tools, quickly assessed the situation, understanding the delicate balance of the ecosystem and the role predators play in it. They knew that every life, including that of a wolf's, was precious. With a calm and steady hand, they managed to release the wolf from its metallic prison. The wolf, bewildered by this act of kindness from a human, hesitated for a moment. It was a fleeting moment of mutual understanding and respect that transcended the natural enmity between species. Once freed, the wolf didn't linger, it bounded away. 
back into the depths of the forest, its spirit unbroken thanks to the unexpected mercy it received. The conservationist watched it disappear, feeling a profound sense of accomplishment. They had not only saved a life, but had also contributed to the preservation of the natural order. This encounter in the heart of the Wisconsin woods was a reminder of the complex relationship between humans and wildlife. It highlighted the importance of compassion, understanding, and the efforts of those dedicated to wildlife conservation. The wolf's ordeal ended not with the grim finality it had anticipated but with a renewed chance at life. All thanks to the intervention of someone who dared to care, this tale of unexpected rescue serves as a beacon of hope, illustrating that even in the darkest of moments, kindness can shine through and alter the course of fate. A captive squirrel had darted away, leaving the predator to face the grim reality of its entrapment. The wolf, filled with frustration and urgency, battled to escape the unrelenting grip of the trap that had ensnared its leg, despite its fervent efforts, the metallic jaws of the trap refused to relinquish their hold. Panic overwhelmed the wolf as it recognized its escape was impossible. The freedom it had once roamed in was now a distant memory, snatched away by an unforeseen adversary. As time wore on, exhaustion took over. The traps, laid by skilled hunters, offered no hope of escape for the ensnared predator without outside intervention. It awaited a miracle to save it before the hunters could discover its plight, lying. Weakened and drained, the once mighty wolf experienced a profound sense of vulnerability. Suddenly, the quiet of the forest was broken by distant sounds, signaling the approach of an unknown threat, rustling and soft footsteps, accompanied by whispered voices, indicated that what was once a sanctuary now harbored danger, alert and tense. The wolf listened as the noises grew closer, the sound of a gunshot, a resounding blast that echoed across the landscape, filled the wolf with dread. The hunters had arrived, armed and ready to transform the tranquil haven into a deadly battlefield. With its heart racing, the wolf's instincts screamed for freedom, but the relentless trap held it fast. The gunshot served as a harrowing reminder of the peril it faced. As panic set in, the wolf strained to locate the source of the approaching danger, but the hunters moved with stealth and strategy, making it difficult to pinpoint their position. They deliberately created misleading noises to confuse their prey. Amidst the tense atmosphere, the wolf's acute hearing picked up the hunters' whispered exchanges, their voices weaving through the underbrush. Unable to see its assailants, the wolf could only imagine the threatening figures drawing closer. With the hunters nearing, the wolf's attempts to escape became increasingly frantic, each effort a desperate fight against time. The forest seemed to constrict around it, and its breaths grew rapid with a blend of fear and determination. However, a grim realization dawned on the wolf. There was no escape. Resigned to its fate, it lay back, preparing to confront whatever came next, its spirit battered but unyielded, facing the encroaching danger with a dignified calm, awaiting the final outcome of this harrowing ordeal. As the hunters encircled the ensnared wolf, the atmosphere grew heavy with anticipation, mirroring the ominous clouds that precede a tempest. Among them, a youthful hunter's eyes gleamed with a harsh intent toward the ensnared beast, his posture betraying a readiness for violence, a sinister light of malice dancing in his gaze. The rest of the group, caught in a web of indecision and discomfort, sought direction from their seasoned leader. The elder hunter paused, taking in the tense tableau before him, his eyes locked with those of the wolf, and in that quiet communion, he reached a verdict that veered away from the path they had tread so far. To the astonishment of his companions, he commanded that the wolf be freed, not harmed. Initially, the group wavered, torn between the ingrained imperatives of the hunt and their deep-seated respect for their leader. A voice of dissent rose among them, challenging the unexpected decree. But it soon became clear that the leader's resolve was unshakable, as his unwavering determination washed over them, they reluctantly began to align their actions with his directive, embarking on a rescue mission that none had foreseen. The truth was, their expedition had not been a quest for wolves or bears but for wild boars, deer, hares, and other game whose flesh would fetch a good price at the market. A wolf offered no such bounty, 
and they saw no merit in its death for mere sport. Their encounter was an unintended deviation from their goal, one they now sought to correct. However, their preparation had been for hunting, not releasing, leaving them ill-equipped to open the trap. They resolved to return to their vehicles in search of suitable tools. One. Hunter volunteered to stay behind, offering mutual protection to both himself and the wolf from any unseen threats lurking in the forest's heart. Armed and vigilant, he kept the company of the cautious yet curious wolf, both keenly aware of the forest's hidden depths and potential surprises. The remaining hunters ventured back into the woods, their steps merging with the natural sounds of the forest as they searched for something to aid their unexpected task. Their search led them to discover a piece of plywood hidden among the underbrush. After assessing its strength and potential utility and safely distancing themselves from the freed wolf, they deemed it suitable for their needs. With the plywood secured, they made their way back to the site where the wolf awaited its fate. Now transformed from a scene of potential violence to one of liberation, the hunters approached, armed not with weapons of harm, but with tools of mercy, ready to undo the mistake of their unintended capture and released the wolf back into the wild, a decision that reflected a profound respect for life in the natural order. The gentle demeanor and the patient efforts of the humans painted a different picture. Slowly, the wolf's guarded stance softened, its ears perked up with a mix of caution and curiosity rather than outright fear. The hunter, having freed the wolf from the trap, stepped back slowly, giving the creature space to understand its newfound liberty. The air was thick with anticipation as the Wolf tested its injured leg, tentatively placing weight on it, then more confidently as it realized the pain had lessened, the second human, who had initially returned with the wrench, watched the scene unfold with a sense of awe. The boy, who had once seen the wolf as nothing more than a potential plaything, now understood the gravity of the situation. He stood silently, observing the interaction between his companion and the wild creature with a newfound respect. The hunter, with a final nod towards the wolf, signaled that their work here was done. The plywood, which had served as a protective barrier, was gently set aside. The humans began to retreat, leaving the wolf to reclaim its freedom fully. The creature's eyes followed their movement, a complex mix of emotions flickering within them, fear, confusion, and perhaps a glint of gratitude. As the humans disappeared from sight, the wolf took a moment to gather itself. The forest, once a place of pain and entrapment, now seemed to welcome it back with open arms. The sounds of the forest, previously muted by its distress, now rang clear and vibrant. With a deep breath, the wolf turned, stepping back into the dense foliage, its spirit unbroken by the ordeal. This encounter, though brief, had changed something fundamental in the dynamics between man and beast. The wolf, once wary of every human interaction, had experienced a moment of unexpected kindness, and the humans, for their part, walked away with a deeper understanding of the wild creatures they shared their world with. The forest watched in silent approval as the wolf disappeared into its depths, a testament to the fragile, yet profound connection between the human and the natural world. The hunters were gradually retreating, silently allowing the situation to stabilize. The wolf, seizing the moment to escape the imminent danger, sprang up with a surge of vitality and dashed into the dense forest, its speed unmatched the plywood. Now etched with the scars of a fierce encounter and a victorious escape, lay abandoned on the forest ground. Its purpose in the wolf's dramatic escape story served the other hunters, their expressions a complex tapestry of joy and contentment, shared glances of mutual understanding. The elder, who had orchestrated this remarkable alliance of mercy, nodded in silent approval, his decision vindicated. The group resumed their tasks, resetting the trap with the hope of capturing something marketable. However, their efforts for the day would yield no tangible rewards. Contrary to their initial disappointment, the elder presented a different perspective. They hadn't secured a prize to trade for profit, but they had achieved something he had long desired, to repay a debt of gratitude. He proceeded to share the backstory of this moral obligation with the group. During a particularly harsh winter, the elder found himself disoriented and in peril deep within the woods. 
the snow-laden paths were indistinguishable, transforming the forest into an inscrutable labyrinth. Despite his extensive wilderness knowledge, he was overwhelmed by the situation. At his most vulnerable, a wolf appeared, unknowingly acting as a savior, oblivious to the significance of its actions. The wolf left behind a trail of prints that served as a beacon for the elder, following this unexpected guide. He managed to navigate his way to the periphery of the woods and ultimately to the safety of his truck. The elder never forgot the inadvertent rescue the wolf had unwittingly provided him with a lifeline during his direst moment. This deep-seated sense of indebtedness was the driving force behind his insistence on releasing the wolf. Though uncertain if this was the same wolf from his past, he felt a profound obligation to aid one of its kind, thus fulfilling his debt. When the hunters absorbed the elder's tale, they gained insight into the profound bond between him and the wolf and the reasoning behind his decision became clear, the experience bestowed upon them a renewed perspective on life, the intricate web of debts we owe one another, and the mysterious connections that form in nature's vast expanse. This extraordinary narrative serves as a poignant reminder of the unexpected acts of kindness that bind us and the profound impact they can have on our lives. We invite you to reflect on this story and share your thoughts and reactions. Stay tuned for more captivating stories that celebrate the remarkable and the unexpected in our world. After watching this story, what do you think of? Then there's an another story about a pregnant woman and a wild wolf. Let's expect what will happen. Alexander faced a gut-wrenching decision as he bid farewell to his pregnant wife, Natalia. Leaving her alone in their cabin with a wild wolf was a risk he never imagined taking, yet, circumstances left him with no other option. As he embarked on the long drive to town to fetch a skilled veterinarian, Alexander couldn't shake the feeling of unease that gnawed at him. Glancing back at the cabin, he saw Natalia standing in the doorway, her hand resting protectively on her pregnant belly. Her eyes met his, reflecting a mixture of worry and resignation. Alexander's heart ached with guilt, but he pushed aside his doubts, trusting his instincts to guide him. Earlier that day, while taking a solitary walk in the dense forest, Alexander heard a haunting cry that stirred his curiosity. Venturing deeper into the woods, he stumbled upon a heart-wrenching scene. A young wolf ensnared in a cruel poacher's trap. The sight filled him with a mixture of fear and determination. Despite his own trepidation, Alexander approached the trapped wolf with trembling hands and a heavy heart. The young predator lay whimpering in pain, its eyes filled with a mix of terror and submission. Though accustomed to maintaining a safe distance from wild animals in his role as a wildlife photographer, Alexander felt compelled to act. He couldn't simply turn away and leave the creature to suffer. With a deep breath, Alexander began working to free the trapped wolf from its cruel confinement. Each movement was filled with a sense of urgency, driven by a potent mixture of fear and compassion. As he struggled to release the animal, he couldn't help but marvel at its resilience in the face of adversity. Finally, with a sharp snap, the trap gave way, and the wolf's leg was freed. Yet, the injury was severe, and the young predator lay panting and exhausted, despite the danger and uncertainty. Alexander couldn't abandon the injured creature. He made the decision to bring it back to their cabin where he and Natalia would do everything in their power to nurse it back to health. As Alexander reflected on the events of the day, he knew that their lives would never be the same, despite the risks and challenges they faced. He felt a deep sense of gratitude for the unexpected bond that had formed between them and the wild spirit that had brought them together when Alexander knelt beside the trapped wolf. The dense forest seemed to hold its breath around them. His own breaths came in shallow gasps, each one a testament to the tension and fear that gripped him. His heart raced with adrenaline, his senses heightened to the slightest movement. The wolf's plight was a harrowing sight. Its once sleek fur was now matted with dirt and blood, evidence of its desperate struggle against the cruel trap that held its leg captive. Alexander couldn't tear his gaze away from the creature's eyes, which held a mixture of pain, fear, and a strange sense of resignation. With trembling hands, Alexander reached out towards the metal jaws of the trap, his fingertips hovering just inches away. He could feel the wolf's gaze upon him, 
as if pleading for relief from its torment, every fiber of his being screamed at him to flee, to leave the wild creature to its fate. But he couldn't ignore the call of compassion that tugged at his heartstrings, slowly, cautiously. Alexander began to work at the trap, his movements deliberate and methodical. He tried to push aside the overwhelming surge of emotions threatening to engulf him, the fear of failure, the empathy for the suffering animal, and the awe of being so intimately connected to the raw power of nature. As he worked, the wolf's soft whimpering filled the air, a haunting soundtrack to their silent struggle. Each sound pierced Alexander's soul, driving him to redouble his efforts, to push past the limits of his own fear and doubt. With each movement, he felt a strange kinship with the wounded creature before him, as if they were bound together by an invisible threat of fate. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the trap gave way with a sharp snap, and the wolf's leg was freed. But the relief was short-lived as Alexander beheld the extent of the wolf's injuries. Blood seeped from the wound, staining the forest floor crimson, and the wolf's leg hung limply at an unnatural angle for a moment. Alexander was paralyzed by the enormity of the task before him, the weight of responsibility pressed down on his shoulders, threatening to crush him beneath its burden, but then, as if guided by some unseen force, he found himself making a silent vow, a promise to the wounded creature lying before him. With newfound determination, Alexander resolved to do whatever it took to help the injured wolf survive. He would not abandon it to face the harsh wilderness alone as he met the wolf's gaze once more, he saw a glimmer of something akin to gratitude shining in its eyes, a silent acknowledgement of their shared struggle, and the unspoken bond that now bound them together, when Alexander stood at the threshold of his cabin, bidding farewell to his pregnant wife Natalia, a whirlwind of emotions swept through him, he could sense her unease her silent disapproval of his decision to leave her alone with a wild wolf. Despite the urgency of the situation, he couldn't shake off the guilt gnawing at his heart as he embarked on the long drive to town to fetch Dr. Mackay, the skilled veterinarian, every mile of the journey. Was laden with apprehension, the image of Natalia standing in the doorway, her hand resting protectively on her swelling belly, lingered in Alexander's mind, he couldn't help but wonder if he was making a grave mistake by leaving her vulnerable in the remote cabin, especially with the wild predator lurking nearby. Yet, a flicker of hope and trust in his instincts urged him forward, overriding his doubts for the second time that day, earlier, while the sun cast its golden rays through the dense foliage of the forest. Alexander had embarked on a solitary walk, seeking solace in nature. Little did he expect to stumble upon a scene straight out of a nightmare, a young wolf ensnared in a cruel poacher's trap. The creature's anguished cries pierced the serene tranquility of the woods, stirring Alexander's compassionate soul. Approaching the wounded wolf was a test of his resolve like none other. Every fiber of his being urged him to flee, to maintain a safe distance from the formidable predator, yet, a deeper sense of duty and empathy propelled him forward, as he knelt beside the trapped wolf, his hands quivered with a mixture of fear and determination, the sight of the steel jaws clamped around the wolf's leg, symbolizing human cruelty, ignited a fire within him, a determination to set the creature free from its torment, with painstaking care and unwavering focus, Alexander worked to release the wolf from its agonizing captivity, each movement was deliberate, each action driven by a desire to alleviate the creature's suffering, despite the danger looming over them, a silent understanding seemed to pass between man and beast, a recognition of shared vulnerability and mutual trust. Finally, as the trap relinquished its grip and the wolf's leg was freed, a sense of relief washed over Alexander, yet, the gravity of the situation was not lost on him, the wolf's injuries were grievous its whimpers a haunting reminder of the cruelty of the world they inhabited, as he cradled the wounded creature in his arms, a profound connection blossomed between them, an unspoken bond forged in the crucible of adversity, returning to the cabin with the injured wolf was a journey fraught with challenges, with each step, Alexander felt the weight of responsibility pressing down upon him, yet, the sight of Natalia waiting anxiously by the window spurred him forward, Igniting a flicker of hope amidst the darkness of uncertainty, their reunion was bittersweet, 
tinged with. Natalia's understandable concern and Alexander's own conflicted emotions, the decision to confine the injured wolf to the garage, albeit temporary, was a painful compromise, a testament to Alexander's unwavering commitment to both his wife's safety and his newfound bond with the wild predator as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the forest. Alexander couldn't help but ponder the uncertain future that lay ahead, yet, Amidst the uncertainty, one thing remained clear, the profound impact that a chance encounter with a wounded creature had wrought upon his life, forever altering the course of his journey. Despite the heartache Alexander felt for having to confine the wolf, his resolve to provide care for the animal didn't waver, he went above and beyond, bringing blankets and carefully creating a comfortable makeshift bed for the creature in a corner of his garage. His mind was a whirlwind of thoughts as he deliberated over his options, the most sensible solution. Seemed to be contacting a friend of his, a veterinary doctor who practiced in a small town not far, just an hour's drive away, this friend could offer the professional medical care the wolf desperately needed, however, Alexander's plan hit a snag when he remembered the legal complications involved, a recent intensification in wildlife protection laws meant that transporting a wild animal, even with the noblest intentions, was mired in bureaucratic red tape permits and paperwork, necessary for. Such an endeavor, would take too long to acquire, and time was a luxury the injured wolf did not have. The only viable option that remained was for Alexander to make the journey to the clinic himself and persuade the vet to return with him to his cabin. As he prepared to leave, he could feel the weight of his wife Natalia's gaze on him. Natalia, visibly anxious implored Alexander not to leave her alone with the potentially dangerous animal, her eyes, brimming with fear, locked onto his as she clung to his arm, unable to understand his decision to leave her in such a precarious situation, especially given her vulnerable state, Alexander, torn between his concern for Natalia and his duty towards the injured wolf, pleaded with her to trust him, he promised her that he would return as swiftly as possible stressing that the vet was their only hope for the wolf's survival. Despite the conflict raging within him, he tenderly assured Natalia of his quick return, kissed her goodbye, and set. Off with a heavy heart, the journey through the winding forest road was a race against time, with Alexander's thoughts vacillating between his beloved wife and the wild, unexpected guest they had acquired. This race made him reflect on the astonishing series of events that had led them to this moment. Just two weeks prior, Alexander had arrived at the cabin for a work-related retreat, seeking solitude and a break from the hustle and bustle of daily life. Little did he know that this retreat would take such an extraordinary turn, intertwining his fate with that of a wild wolf and altering the trajectory of his life in unimaginable ways. As he navigated the forest path, he couldn't help but wonder if Natalia regretted her decision to join him at the cabin. Given the unforeseen and tumultuous circumstances that had unfolded, when Natalia had insisted on accompanying Alexander into the remote wilderness, he had been pleasantly surprised by her eagerness to share in his world, what he had envisioned as a romantic escape, a chance to deepen their connection as a couple, had turned into a harrowing ordeal neither of them could have foreseen. As Alexander's thoughts drifted, he couldn't help but reflect on his childhood friend Ivan, the veterinarian he was now racing to see, their bond had been forged in their shared love of animals, from their early days as unrepentant animal lovers, often getting into trouble for bringing stray creatures home, to their adventurous endeavors. Rescuing injured birds and tending to stray dogs, their friendship had remained unbreakable. Now, as Alexander neared the small town where Ivan's clinic was located, he felt a rush of relief. He knew Ivan's expertise would be crucial in ensuring the injured wolf had a fighting chance at recovery. Upon arriving at the clinic, Alexander quickly relayed the events of the day to his childhood friend turned skilled veterinarian. Ivan, his face a mix of concern and determination, listened intently. His years of training and experience propelling him into action without hesitation as they drove back to the cabin, Alexander felt a sense of urgency and hope mingling within him, he prayed with all his heart that they would be able to save the wolf, 
offering it a chance for a life free from suffering. When they returned to the cabin, they found the poor animal barely clinging to life. Ivan wasted no time, his hands moving with precision born of years of practice. The cabin became a makeshift operating room, a place where humanity and the wild converged in a desperate bid for survival. While Ivan worked tirelessly, the compassionate photographer watched, his heart heavy with worry and anticipation, each passing moment was fraught with tension, every movement filled with purpose as they fought against time to save the life of the injured predator, in that makeshift operating room, amidst the wilderness that had become their temporary home, Alexander found himself holding on to hope, praying that their efforts would not be in vain, with a deep sense of gratitude for his friend. Ivan's expertise, Alexander couldn't help but feel a wave of relief wash over him. He had braved the rugged wilderness, risking everything to save the injured wolf, and now, with Ivan's help, there was hope for its recovery. As they drove back to the cabin, Alexander's mind raced with thoughts of the wounded predator, wondering if they would arrive in time to make a difference. Upon their return to the cabin, they found the wolf barely clinging to life, its labored breaths echoing through the dimly lit room, Ivan wasted no time, his skilled hands moving with precision as he tended to the wolf's injuries, every moment felt like an eternity for Alexander, his heart heavy with concern as he watched his friend work tirelessly to save the young predator. As Ivan labored over the wolf, Alexander found himself drawn into its care, his initial fear replaced by a sense of duty and compassion, he fetched supplies held the wolf steady during treatments, and offered words of encouragement to both the creature and his friend. It was a test of endurance for them all, each passing hour filled with uncertainty and hope. Days turned into weeks, and the injured wolf slowly began to show signs of improvement. With each passing day, Alexander felt a bond forming between them, forged in the shared experience of survival and resilience. He marveled at the wolf's strength and determination, a silent testament to the untamed spirit of the wild, despite the challenges they faced, Alexander and Natalia found solace in caring for the wounded predator, Natalia's maternal instincts kicked in as she joined her husband in tending to the wolf, her gentle touch and soothing words providing comfort to both the creature and her husband. Finally, after weeks of dedicated care and attention, the wolf's condition stabilized, and it was deemed fit to return to the wild with bittersweet emotions. Alexander and Natalia accompanied the wolf to the edge of the forest, watching as it disappeared into the dense foliage. Though sad to see their companion go, they knew it was the right thing to do, allowing the creature to reclaim its rightful place in the natural world. When life returned to normal, Alexander couldn't shake the memory of the injured wolf, its resilience serving as a constant reminder of the fragile balance between humanity and nature. And so, when the opportunity arose to return to the cabin with their daughter Erica, Alexander embraced it wholeheartedly, eager to reconnect with the wilderness and perhaps, with the wolf that had left an indelible mark on his soul, drawn by the distant howling, he embarked on a quest, hopeful that it was his canine companion making the sound, as hours turned into an expedition, he was so captivated in his pursuit that he completely lost track of time, daylight gradually gave way to the late afternoon hues, and it dawned on him that his wife would be growing anxious by now especially since the dense woods offered no cell phone service to reassure her of his safety rushing back he arrived home to a mix of relief and concern from his wife over dinner he shared the tale of his day-long odyssey igniting his wife's worries that he might have endangered himself for a mere chance encounter with the wolf she voiced her apprehension about the potential dangers of meeting not just the wolf but perhaps other more threatening wildlife alexander Understanding her fears, vowed to abandon his quest to locate the wolf, a promise he managed to keep for the rest of their vacation. However, on the morning of their departure, as the family was packing their car, an unexpected and remarkable moment unfolded. Alexander's attention was captured by the sight of a wolf, one that bore a striking resemblance to the one he had once saved, approaching him with an item in its jaws, initially frozen with fear. His apprehension soon gave way to awe as he recognized the wolf by its distinctive amber eyes, gray coat, and the 
familiar limp in its left hind leg. In an astonishing gesture, the wolf came up to him and carefully laid a piece of meat at his feet, a token of gratitude for the rescue it had not forgotten even after two years. With a final, lingering look, the wolf then vanished back into the wilderness overwhelmed and moved to tears. Alexander stood in silent wonder, he was certain it was the very same wolf he had helped, and though he sensed this encounter would be their last, the gratitude end. Recognition from the wild animal left him profoundly touched, as he drove back to the city, he pondered over this extraordinary connection with a creature of the wild, a bond that defied the barriers of time and species, leaving an everlasting impression on his heart and soul, this story is a testament to the unexpected and heartwarming connections that can occur between humans and wildlife, would you have extended your help to a wolf in distress, and how would you have felt in the shoes of? Alexander's wife, Natalia, concerned yet touched by this unique bond, share your thoughts and feelings with us in the comments below, that's all about our story, if you like this story, please like and subscribe to the channel, and see you in the next story.